Hi there again and welcome to another MeVsMaths.com tutorial on Pythagoras Rule or Pythagoras Theory. This is the third and final tutorial in this series, so if you don't yet know anything about Pythagoras then I'd suggest you check out the other two tutorials first of all. In this final section we're going to look specifically at applying Pythagoras to answer problems that may not immediately appear to be Pythag questions if you like. Yet again, before we get started, let's just remind ourselves of the rule. The square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the two other sides. And don't forget this rule is only for right-angled triangles. We've previously turned Pythagoras' theorem into two, let's call them mini-rules, and here's a reminder of what they are. If we're looking for the longest side, we square it, square it, add it, root it, whereas if we're looking for a short side, we square both the sides we're given, we subtract it and root it. And a little way to help us remember which to use and when, SSS, if you're looking for the short side, then we subtract. Let's have a look at our first example then, that might not immediately appear to be a Pythagoras question, as it's not a right angled triangle. However, it's important to remember that any isosceles triangle can be made into two right angled triangles by splitting it straight down the middle, like so. Let's take one of these new triangles now and try and use it to actually answer our question. Step 1 then, as always, check if we're looking for the hypotenuse. 3.7 metres is the longest side, the one opposite the right angle, so we're actually looking for one of the shorter sides, because we're trying to find that length at the bottom, which is part of the base. So, the rule that we want to be using is to find a short side, subtract. So square it, square it, subtract it, root it. So then, square both the sides we've been given, subtract as we're looking for a short side, and square root to find our answer. But we're not quite done. Make sure we answer the question. All we've done so far is find this length here. We were being asked originally to find the length of the base B, so we need the total length of this whole base, we need two of these 2.4 metre lengths to find the total length for B, which is 4.8 metres. OK, on to our next problem. Here we're actually looking at a rectangle, so it certainly doesn't appear, just from looking at it, to be anything to do with Pythagoras' rule. We've been asked to find the length of the diagonal AC, which just means the line from point A to point C. As soon as we've done that, you may notice that we've created two right-angled triangles, just one of which you can see here. So let's focus on this triangle. You know the drill well by now. Check first of all, are we looking for the hypotenuse? We are looking for the side opposite the right angle, so yes, we are trying to find the hypotenuse. Square it, square it, add it, root it. That's the rule we're going to be using. So square our two sides first, add them together, root and round. And there we go, we found the length of AC as asked for in the question. Next up then, a wordy question with no shapes at all. A boat leaves port and travels 4.8 kilometres due east. It then changes course and travels 9.4 kilometres south. How far is the boat from the port? Now, any question like this is always a good idea to try and draw what you've been given. So let's take it sentence by sentence. A boat leaves port and travels 4.8 kilometres due east. Let's represent that with a line going east. Next we're told that it changes course and travels 9.4 kilometres south. Again, let's add that to our sketch. 
And finally, we are asked how far is the boat from the port. Let's mark that distance onto our drawing. Again, we've created a right angled triangle. So as we can see, we're again looking for the longest side and we'll work it out just as before. I won't talk through all this as I've done so lots of times already. And we find the distance from the boat to the port is 10.6 kilometers. Our final example, different again. We're asked to prove whether or not this triangle is a right angled triangle. Now, if a triangle is right angled, then it will obey Pythagoras rule. One way we can show this is by using letters to represent the sides. And actually, many teachers explain the rule like this. If A and B are our shorter sides, then the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides should equal the square of the C the longest side. As I say, this is how Pythagoras rule is actually first given by many people. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let's test this statement for our triangle. Does A squared plus B squared equal C squared? More specifically for us, does 5.2 squared plus 3.1 squared equal 6.4 squared? 5.2 squared is 27.04, 3.1 squared is 9.61, and 6.4 squared is 40.96. So does 27.04 plus 9.61 make 40.96? No, it doesn't. If you put the left-hand side into a calculator, or you may be able to do that in your head, the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides is actually 36.65, which does not equal the hypotenuse squared. So, this triangle is not right angled. If we'd arrived at two equal totals there, then it would have been right angled. But in our case, we didn't, so it's not. We've covered some really tough questions there. As always, thanks for watching and remember, if you're not there already, you can find lots more resources on both this topic and others by exploring the website at meversusmaths.com. Any questions on anything to do with Pythagoras, then please feel free to ask in the comments section and I will of course do my best to help. Bye for now.